AlphaCool has released version two of their IceWolf liquid cooler for graphics cards, or perhaps that's version Zwei. In principle, liquid cooling or graphics cards, such as this PNY Accelerate RTX 20 Ti, is a really good idea, provided you're prepared to remove the cooler that PNY has spent some time developing and then put it, you know, to one side. So you're parking quite a lot of money. And then of course you have to source a compatible block for your graphics card because the designs tend to vary. And then you've got to install liquid cooling system in your PC. Provided you're prepared to do that, great. The thing is that installing an all-in-one liquid cooler in your CPU, it's a doddle. In principle, liquid cooling or graphics card could be a similarly straightforward process, but it tends to be that we use a full custom loop for graphics cards, and that means a whole pile of kit and loads of complicated plumbing. IceWolf is intended to make your life easy. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Daniel from AlphaCool, what do you think? No, that's not correct. Listen and repeat. Ice Wolf. Thank you very much. Before I open the box and show you how the Ice Wolf 2 compares to the original Ice Wolf GPX Pro, I'm going to ask, have you subscribed? Have you hit the bell button for notifications? If not, do it now. Okay then. Here we have the original GPX Pro 240mm radiator, very large quick brakes with the coloured rings to show you which is in and out. And there we have the GPU block which has the pump in the block and you can see that only part of the block is actively cooled and the rest of the cooling relies on uh, conduction through the metal and then convection away into the airflow. So it's essentially partially liquid cooled and the pump is on the block. The new setup is different. So again, 240mm rad. The quick brakes are rather more discreet and slightly smaller. They're just black rather than having uh, chunks of color in the middle of your case. And then the block has this pump here on the manifold. So that is far neater. That would naturally be mounted horizontally like so. So when you're looking from the side, you're seeing this with its logo. I imagine that's gonna light up. And the block provides active cooling to the entire graphics card. So we've got power management memory and GPU all actively cooled. To see how the Ice Wolf performs. Ice Wolf. Yes, thank you. I'm first going to install the PNY in stock form in this test PC and then I'll add the Ice Wolf liquid cooler to the graphics card and rerun the tests. The test system is built in a Cooler Master Mastercase H500P. This is the Mesh Phantom Gaming Edition version. Motherboard is an MSI MPG Z490 gaming carbon Wi-Fi with an Intel Core i9-9900KF processor. Memory is 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Royal DDR4 3200 megahertz. The SSD is a one terabyte WD Blue M.2 NVMe. Power supply is a Seasonic Focus Platinum. The CPU cooler is also by AlphaCool. It's their Ice Bear model using the 360mm rad in the front and the two 200mm fans that come with the Cooler Master case. That's Ice Bear. No, that's wrong. You pronounce it Ice Bear. Nah. The first job is to get some baseline figures for the PNY Accelerate RTX 2080 Ti. Dominic previously reviewed this graphics card. My figures come out in line with his. However, it's worth pointing out I'm using an enclosed test system. Dominic uses an open test bench. Dominic removed the stock cooler during his review and replaced it, so it's perfectly possible the figures have been affected by that. Also, I'm using the Cooler Master case, which has a pair of hulking great big 200mm fans at the front. They're running at a fixed 900 RPM, i.e. low and slow. Taking all that together, my temperatures are about 8 degrees higher than Dominic's. That's no cause for concern, it's just worth bearing in mind before we move on to the next step.
which is taking the stock graphics card to pieces and installing the Alpha Cool Ice Wolf 2. Ice Wolf. That's right, the Ice Wolf 2. It's time to install the graphics block on the PNY graphics card, but first I'm gonna take a look at these quick breaks. To separate the radiator from the graphics block, we undo this locking collar, which is simply threaded. Kitchen towel, because a drop or two of fluid might come out. And then pull. There we go, I'd say more than a drop or two, but perhaps a teaspoon. So we're able to install the radiator with the hoses in the case and we can install the block and the pump and the hoses on the graphics card, basically splitting the job in half. But of course the real reason that you want quick brakes on hoses like this is so you can extend the loop. If we take this accessory pack which is a 360 radiator the radiator is immediately familiar as a regular alpha called 30 mil uh, thick unit 3 by 120 and you can see they've installed the hoses so it's pre-filled it's got quick brakes so if i choose i can connect this get the right way around like so so i can change from a 240 to a 360 easily or i can extend the cooling loop and add the 360 to the 240 by daisy chaining the system together. Off with the stock cooler. And the back plate is secured with these screws here. One thing I have noted is that the Alpha Cool block does not have a back plate. I have the back plate from the original Ice Wolf GPX. Not sure if I use that, but if I can reuse the PNY back plate, I guess that might be an option. There we go. One bare card. Ow! Just remembered I cut my thumb just there earlier on and believe you me, I can feel the alcohol. The thermal pads are in place. I put the block on this small box, and then if I offer up the graphics card with the bracket hanging over the end, I'll be able to connect the two together. The fact that the pump's holding it up at a bit of an angle isn't the end of the world. There we go, plenty of thermal compound. I want to try and put this down in the right place first time without messing up the thermal pads. Looks reasonable. I can't use the stock back plate, the screws have to come through the PCB, that ain't going to work. If I offer up this Alpha Cool back plate, it kind of maybe goes, except I think it might just be fouling against there. Yeah, if you look, if you can see through there, I'm a half a hold out. So that isn't a goer unless I do some modding, and I don't want to do that. Fans on the radiator. The 
The H500P has this removable cover on top, so I can pull this off, install the radiator, and then put the whole assembly back in place. Instead of trying to offer the radiator up and then hold the weight while I secure it with these tiny little screws. Graphics card installed. And in with the radiator assembly. We have some cable management to attend to. These are the two fans on the radiator with a supplied Y cable. So we need one fan connection there. And here we have the three RGB connections from the two fans and from the graphics block. And they daisy chain together. And then we plug in the supplied adapter. And there we have the addressable RGB connection. And we've also got the power for the pump. So let us put that there. We'll have the addressable RGB like so. And now we connect the two coolant hoses for the ice wolf. We should be ready for action. System's running and I've removed the glass to give you the full benefit of the lighting. And it is crystal clear with the lighting set to a steady blue that the RGB system works well and that the GeForce RTX logo is green. I'm told this is a licensing thing. For AlphaCool to use GeForce RTX, they have to play by Nvidia's rules, hence the green. If you buy an AMD block for your Radeon, that is gonna have red lighting because that's how it is. So yes, there's RGB on the graphics block, but it's under there. The bit you see at all times is green. The RGB system is a combination of Cooler Master fans at the front, G-Skill Trident Z Royal Memory. We've got an MSI motherboard, which has its own lighting. Everything else you can see is Alpha Cool, and the software is MSI Dragon Center. I've mentioned that I'm not overjoyed about the aesthetics of the hoses. In addition to that, the graphics cards. So the pretty side is facing down and we don't have a back plate. And those two things combined are vexing. If you're using the Ice Wolf 2, I think you should be thinking strongly in terms of a vertical GPU mount. In terms of performance, this is where things get interesting. When I did my baseline run, using the H500P case certainly hurt temperatures for the air-cooled graphics card compared to Dominic's original review. Installing the Ice Wolf 2 liquid cooling system immediately returned temperatures to where we expected them to be and helped clock speeds as well. As you know, with the NVIDIA graphics cards, if you help the cooling, they help themselves. In addition to that, we know full well the roof of the H500P doesn't have a huge amount of exhaust venting and the radiator is in the roof. As a simple proof, I removed the roof of the case for one set of tests and temperatures for the graphics card dropped by a further six degrees. Clearly exposing the heat exchanger helps. The interesting thing there was that reducing temperatures by a further six degrees didn't make any difference to the speed we got from the graphics card. Thermal's good, performance had clearly hit a ceiling. Let's wrap this up. What do I think of the AlphaCool Ice Wolf 2? In principle, I'm all in favor of people liquid cooling their graphics cards. I fully understand that when you liquid cool your CPU, you have to put a cooler on your CPU, whether you choose to put an all-in-one, a custom loop or an air cooler, you're choosing a cooler. A graphics card is a completely different proposition because of course the graphics card comes with a cooler. You have to remove the stock cooler, which gives you warranty issues apart from the uh, general anxiety of removing a cooler from a very expensive piece of hardware and then you have to install a new cooling system. There's no doubt in my mind the installation of the Ice Wolf 2 is dead straightforward. It went on really easily and then installing the system in the case also easy. So in that sense, it's a great success. The price is also good. Overall, the aesthetics, I think they let the uh, system down significantly and that's a problem because of course many people liquid cool for the bling factor. If you put the bling to one side, then for price and performance, the AlphaCool Ice Wolf 2, it works well. If AlphaCool can come up with some further refinement of the hoses and the quick brakes, that would help a great deal. The look of the pump on the manifold, that I like a lot. Overall, it's a qualified success.
If you like this video, hit the bell button, subscribe. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. This is the Alpha Cool Ice Wolf 2.